So my girlfriend was a mute. Yes, I know, it's crazy. I mean, when we were together, she couldn't say a single word to me, even though I very much definitely wanted to talk to her. And sure, I longed to hear her voice. That's definitely not a lie. But what's wild about this relationship is that even though we didn't talk, it was still one of the closest relationships I've ever had in my life. And I ruined it. So you're just gonna lie about her being mute, huh? W lie? W who said I was lying? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was the panic girl with the tape over her mouth in that intro. I don't think mute people have tape over their mouths. I'm pretty sure they do. What? Look, Vibby, why would I lie? Come on. Okay, let's we're going to do here. this again. I've never lied, like, ever in my life. I respect women. I <laughs> that was a lie. I'm really going to stop saying that in videos. I'm going to take off this tape now. I might keep this tab. Look, I know I got a lot of explaining to do. Just know I lied about her being mute, so I don't look really, really bad for what I'm about to say. Even more bad than getting caught in a lie in your own video? Yeah, yeah. All right, so during my sophomore year, I was kind of obsessed with this girl. In fact, I've talked about this girl before. She's the same girl from my stalker video. You know, the girl whose number I got and then stalked her. <laughs> sure, some of my titles might be lies, but all of them make me look like a bad person. Now, in that video, I said this. I didn't want to get to know people, but I did want a girlfriend makes complete sense. Now what does that say about me except that I'm a beta male? Basically that I have social anxiety and that talking to people is really hard for me. But the thing is that, although I said that, is that I also said this in that video. And I actually, you know, talked to her. And believe it or not, I got her number. Which to the usual smart person uh, doesn't exactly add up. How do I have classic YouTube story time or social anxiety, but also YouTube prank channel levels of confidence to just go up and get her number like that? Well, it's easy, a simple answer, it's a simple answer, you know, it's not a big deal. I lied. I'm really glad I kept that tab. I didn't really get her number on my own. In reality, it was a bit of a group effort, but not a group effort as in like they did it for me. I'm not that much of the pansy. A group effort as in they were in the room when I did it. And I know it sounds like they didn't help, but that was like the most helpful thing they could do. See, the thing about talking to people is it's much harder to do one-on-one, -on -one, but when you're with a group of people, it's super easy. It's like an anime when the main character is getting his ass kicked by a super strong bad guy and then all of his friends are just sitting there watching. I used to think that was the most useless thing, but at that moment I realized they were the real heroes of the situation. So shout out to Piccolo for like saving the earth so many times, dog. You're the real one. So we defeated galaxy level villain social anxiety, got our number, and all that happened on Friday. We were still in school because we were high schoolers and that's what high schoolers do. So I wouldn't see her again till the weekday. But I had all weekend to use this opportunity and text her. And when we sent those first messages, that's when I realized she was different like you know when you talk to someone the conversation is incredibly dry like yo how are you what are you doing nothing and then you just do that perpetually for like two hours now me and her actually you know talked about things it was it was crazy because she was so different we slowly talk more and more over the course of that weekend we had similar interests she was funny she was quirky and i could visibly see that through text which is very hard she knew when to put the right emojis all right that's hot but even deeper than that, we just kind of had a connection. I don't know, it was one of those things where you can just keep talking to them and not want to stop. She kind of understood me as like the socially anxious dude and she was okay with it. And I don't know, she was like one of the first people who gave me attention and, and liked me even though I was like this big nerd at the time who, I don't know, who barely cleaned himself. Like she still messed with me. Even though I got bullied and all that, she still liked me. And still wanted to talk to me and then just like that on like in the course of a weekend i uh fell for her haha -ha. <laughs> so when monday finally came around i was really excited to follow up on all that connection making i had with her because at this point over the course of those two days we had already set the groundwork for something really special and because of that i knew it would be super easy to just talk to her you know i was excited it's gonna be great at least i thought so Oh, oh boy. So I walked into school that day, like really excited, wearing my best fit, because you know I'm here to dress to impress now. And then I saw her. And then I 
quickly fled the sea. <laughs> For some reason in my core, I, I didn't want to speak to her. I was too scared. Talking to her would put me in a really uncomfortable situation. And why is that? Oh, well, glad you asked. See, here's what I realized immediately after trying to come out of my comfort zone. See, texting and talking is way different, okay? I mean, a lot could go wrong in that situation. I could slip up, I could just stop talking. Like in texting, I can like sit there for 20 minutes and think of something and it's totally fine, okay? Not exactly how it works in real life. And I really wasn't messing with risking what I already had set up here. Like I can barely handle any relationship as is. Like I don't really wanna mess with this one. But it really all came down to, I was just too scared to come out of my comfort zone. Like this is what I knew, why try something else? Like dog, the pilgrims gave the Indians uh, stuff they didn't know and, and they died. So uh, I, I think this is pretty one-to-one. -one. When I got home that night, I wondered if I texted her, if it'd be weird. I mean, maybe she saw me totally ignore her. And it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. She didn't say anything about it. So that night, we texted as usual. And I felt comfortable. This was a lot more comfortable than having to actually talk to her. This was safe. And I liked it. So we kept going. And going. And going. And I never did what I promised. Every day, I text her. Our relationship over text would develop. And I avoid her at school. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it just... <laughs> Why? Why are you like this? It's crazy that our relationship over text have blossomed like crazy. We began to know each other in and out. We were texting on the dot every day consistently, like within every five minutes. Yeah, it was it was insane. And even past then, over the following weeks, we even started calling. We'd call. And you'd think because we could call and talk, I'd be able to like talk to her in person, but not, no. We were texting every day on the dot, calling every day for at least three hours, being on the phone, falling asleep on call, knowing everything about each other. And she was basically my best friend. And I thought she was really cute. And I think that literally checks off every box for a girlfriend. And that's why I lie at the beginning because she wasn't the mute. I was the mute because <laughs> I was too scared to talk to her. And I feel like it would have looked less bad if I just said she was the mute. Well, I feel a lot of grade school and middle school relationships work like that, so it can't. I was 16. Oh, yeah, that's embarrassing. Uh, everyone's going to think I'm a child. Well, on the bright side, to me, you'll never not be a child, so you don't have much to lose. Maybe like a month and some change it went by and I don't know what came over me. But for some reason I thought, let's just put it all on the table right now. I've met your parent, over text. I've met your brother, over text. And we get upset when we don't talk to each other. Sounds like a relationship to me, over text. And I nut it up and I typed it out. I really like you. And she denied me. What a shock, what a, what a turn of fate. Who would have thought? Of course everyone would have thought. I think about it, her saying no to me shows that she was even more dateable quality. Like, that, how was that gonna work? And, and look, I, I'm not the most socially adept dude. I the whole not talking to her in person thing, but I knew what that meant. And it just meant that I had to nut up and talk to her in person. To make this work, I had to step out of my comfort zone and I was ready and willing because all the connections we shared meant so much to me. <laughs> Like this was really like one of the first loves I've ever had over text. <laughs> so maybe a couple of days later, the sun shined on me that day. I don't know. The clouds parted, the, the texting, social anxiety clouds, they parted and on me laid a chance. See that day we're all sitting in a group and typically our lunch table and the lunch table she sat at didn't mix. But for some reason today they mixed. <laughs> and that means that I was supposed to by law, sit at the table that she was sitting at. It was great. And this worked because remember what I said at the beginning? This was Dragon Ball Z friends just watching. Them being there is all I needed to actually execute. Like how I got her number in the first place. So I started to gird up. I was ready to talk to her. I was ready to do this. And all of a sudden, the bell rang. And then everyone was gone. My one chance at being social was gone. But what's wild is that she stayed at the table and I stayed at the table for some elaborate reason. Not because I wanted to like talk to her because I was like too scared to move, I think. And then it was just me and her right there. For someone with that one, you got a pretty big dick. She looked at me and just kind of gave me these eyes. I 
Ugh, to this day, I can't. It drives me crazy. Which is weird because she was 16 at the time. Is that is it bad for me as a 22-year-old to still... You know what? We're not even going to go there. And this was my chance to say something, to, to really express how I felt. Or to at least hold a conversation. So I opened my mouth and said, I had to go. Idiot! Stupid! <laughs> Stupid! I couldn't do it. I couldn't say anything to her. Even though she meant so much to me, I didn't want to be in that uncomfortable situation. My heart was racing. I couldn't take it. I just wanted to get out of there. And that's kind of where everything went downhill. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe she knew that that was the point that would determine if we'd actually be together. But after that, we just kind of started falling off. We moved on. I ended up graduating high school. She went to a different college than me kind of just went our separate ways. And it hurt because that was one of the strongest connections I'd ever had, even just through text, like it really was. Uh, and even as my social anxiety started to get less and less, I kind of wanted to work on getting myself used to those uncomfortable situations. Because if I ruin this, what could I ruin further in the future? It's time to fix myself. So one day I was out of college, I was back home in my hometown, just picking up some stuff from the local grocery store um, with my sister. And I was just walking down the aisles and then I saw this, beautiful long hair and this really familiar body type. I'm not lying, it was her, the girl. I hadn't seen her for four years and there she was physically right in front of me. And I said words to her and like, <laughs> I talked to her. He was only like maybe 10 or so words. We were only talking for about 10 seconds, but I did it. I said something. And I, I know that doesn't seem like a lot for like a 22 year old, like, oh God, I hope you can say that which it is but it meant a lot to me they even though i ruined things earlier and maybe things could have been different in a different timeline that i did it now i said something to her now and i mean maybe there was hope for me in the future to not be the most socially anxious piece of crap out there so more of the story here being in uncomfortable situations it doesn't feel good. Obviously, it's implied by the name uncomfortable. <laughs> but being able to leave your comfort zone really opens you up to a lot of options. And I'm sure not everyone's gonna have it as extreme as I did, where they couldn't actually physically speak to someone, but still developed a whole relationship over online. But putting yourself out there is how you get things to work. And I'm really upset I missed out on something great because I didn't. Who knows how happy I could have been, how much less relationship video, um, crying you guys would see from me on this channel so put yourself out there more guys don't be like me um do something you know if it's a situation that you're a little scared to do it might make you better for it so try it out just saying oh what's up y'all your boy is tired like really tired i got back from cali and i want <sighs> sleep but i didn't because i made this video so i uh, uh, before we get into anything, please check out my Discord server. We hang out in there and talk about um, depression, typically. So it's a great time. Uh, that's really about it. I'm about to go back to bed in my um, children's uh, blanket. Uh, thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.